Pray with me, if you will. Father in heaven, uh, we come to your throne of grace right now, thanking you for every blessing we receive from your hand. And Father, even though uh, we don't like the cold weather necessarily, we understand that it is part of your plan and necessity for this earth. Help us, Father, to, uh, to live through this with the, uh, the cheer in mind that you have for us. Thank you, Father, for uh, pouring out your blessings to all of our ill who are still with us. We thank you, Father, for your, your care for them. We ask, Father, that we be better brothers and sisters and checking uh, always on our, our brothers and sisters who are ill. Father, we have so many who have passed. And we ask, Father, that you be uh, with the Stanley family and the Ford family and the Gaither family and now the Peebles family. So many great servants that uh, have, have departed from us, but Father, we rejoice that they are now with you in comfort. We ask, Father, that you be with the, uh, those that are still ill that we're praying for actively, and particularly uh, Rebecca Haltom Robertson and uh, Karen Hill and Terry Shockley and Ann Fowler and Kylie Swink, Carl and Mary Standridge and Kimberly Merrill. And the, uh, and the Yates family, Earl Cox, and so many others, Father, that we don't have down here uh, on our list. And I ask, Father, that you be with my sister as she goes through a heart cath tomorrow. Father, there, there's a lot of division in our country, and we ask, Father, that you uh, continue to quiet that and that you give us enough attention in our own hearts and minds that we seek you in everything. Father, that our country's leaders seek you in everything they do and say. We ask, Father, that you pour that blessing back into this country so that it can be a light on a, on a hill. 
Help us, Father, to, to be the support beams for that, that hill. Help us, Father, to encourage all those around us and to seek you in everything we say and do. Thank you for loving us and pouring out this blessing upon us, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. To those that are watching us online today, I want to thank you so much for being a part of our service today here at the Walnut Church of Christ. Also to those who braved the weather and came uh, to our in-person worship, thank you so much. And uh, our prayers are with all of you today, and I encourage you as the weather moves in to please stay safe. I know it's Valentine's Day, so guys, if you uh, are too late on that, mm, that may not be good. But uh, So we're going to keep you in our prayers as well. But hey, I, seriously, on this day, just like every day, I know today's Valentine's Day, and, and I want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day, but also want to remind us, today is no different than every day of our life. God fills us with his love. Amen. And that's where our true love comes from. And we're able to love those in our lives because of the love that God first and foremost sent down with his son Jesus to give to us in the form of his son. And we are so grateful that we can have relationship with him every day. And so I'm going to call an audible this morning. And I'm going to speak and say some things from my heart that I have really been thinking and praying about over the last few months, to be honest with you. So we're going to take a break from Proverbs. We'll be in Proverbs chapter 9 next week. But I've had so many people from this church, and this is what I love about this congregation, so many have called and texted and, and just in conversation. I know this has been a hard year already. 2020 was tough. 2021 is hard as well already. We've had, in the last six weeks, we've had several deaths that have been close to us, close to this church. Some of those have been pretty sudden, like the one with Tish Peebles yesterday. Anytime you, and, and I know some of you have even lost loved ones and family members and friends from our community that, don't, that do not even go to our church, all of that combined and everything that took place last year, it's just hard. This is just tough. And I, I want to remind us as God's people that God never forsakes us. He is always there to watch over us. And as we would say, he's always there to take care of us. You know, any time when trouble comes in our own life, as, as parents and grandparents, what do we do? Man, we reach out and, and we take care of our family, don't we? And I want you to think about that in the spiritual sense, that whatever we go through in our life, whether it be death, whether it be just financial struggles or family struggles or whatever the case may be, God is always there to watch over us. And there's a particular psalm in Psalm 121. It's a song of ascent that I, I want us to look at just for a few minutes this morning. So I want to start in Psalm 121, and I want to read just the first verse of Psalm 122. And in this context, I want you to see that God is God, and we are not. God sees things that we do not. And what we have to do as his children, we have to trust him. We have to lean on him every day because we never know what's going to happen in our life. But we do know this. God always is there. And so listen to this psalm, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. 
The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Regardless of what is going on in our life, do you see what this psalm reminds us of? God is always present. He is always there. God is in our midst. And sometimes when we're in the middle of a crisis, sometimes when we're in the knee-deep middle of something going on in our life that's just not normal, sometimes we just lose sight of direction. We lose sight of what are we going to do? And sometimes we even ask this question, how will I get through this? And oftentimes people will ask, God, where are you in all of this? I want to tell you, church, that is all normal things to think. It is all normal to be able to see that. But it's also the right thing to do that in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of trying circumstances, what do God's people do? We continue to seek Him. We continue to follow Him in all areas and all ways of life. And going into Psalm 122, you notice what the psalmist says, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, how many times I've heard this. I don't know where I would be through all of this, especially through the pandemic, but I don't know where we would be if we didn't have this. If we didn't have this time to be together on the first day of the week on Sundays to reorient and refocus our thoughts and our attention to God. This is where we need to be. Whether we're here, whether you're watching online, what's important is to know that the presence of God is always surrounding us. That is good news, isn't it, church? God is always there for us. And notice what the psalm says. I've underlined a couple of thoughts in my Bible. Verse 1. What, what do you do when trouble comes? Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and focus on God, not the circumstance at hand. And look at verse 2. God helps us. My help comes from the Lord, the maker. That's the psalmist reminding us he created us. He made us. And so what do we do in troubled times? We go back and we continue to put faith and hope and trust in the very one who created us, the very one who breathed life into us. We lift up our eyes to the hills. Our help comes from the Lord. And look in verses 4 and 5. The Lord watches over us. He's our shade at our right hand. And I love verse 8. He watches over our coming and our going. No matter where we are, God is always there. I pray that you can find hope in a passage like this. And not only that, but I pray that you can find strength. Because you know what happens when difficulties come and times of uncertainty are all around us, we become weak. Sometimes we even become weak in our faith. And it's in our weakness that God makes us strong. And I want to show you another passage of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And I want to close our thoughts today with these powerful words, starting in verse 3, as Paul writes to the church at Corinth, he's reminding this church 
a church that had so much trouble in their life, so many divisions. Bob prayed for unity for our country. Paul here is praying for the unity of the church because they were, they were letting all sorts of things divide them. And as a result, they were becoming weak. But here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, he reminds this great church of the God of all comfort. And notice, starting in verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort ourselves. We ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings that we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. I'm going to pick up in verse 8 in just a moment, but I want to show you something here. In our discomfort, in our weaknesses, here's what Paul says. As we reach out to one another in time of need, and we show comfort to one another, regardless of of what's taking place in our life. When we reach out and show comfort, you know what we are doing? That carries the idea of strength. We comfort one another, and as we do that, we strengthen each other. Is that not true in your own life? Any times where you have felt distress, where you have felt down and out, when that phone call came, or that text message came, or that knock on the door, maybe someone brought food over to you, I don't know what it was. It's in that time where you may feel down, but you receive a little strength from God and his people. That's what we do, isn't it, church? That's how we live. That is the way of life for a Christian, even when it's difficult, we still love and we still reach out. We carry one another's burdens. And notice what Paul says in verse 8. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. But this happened, now hear this, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope, that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. We don't want you to be uninformed. We want you to know that through the hardships that you're going through, God is still God. He is still there. And even when you reach the point, and I love how Paul describes this here, because sometimes we may feel this, that we despair even of life. And, and we go through all this great pressure, Paul says, far beyond our ability to endure. Folks, that's deep. That's hurting. What do we do? We continue to love God. We continue to trust him, and we continue to believe that his will will be done. 
no matter what. May we always trust in God through all of life's circumstances. Let's bow for prayer. Father God, thank you so much for the way that you love us, for the way that you reach out to us. And Father, thank you for always being there for us. Yes, even in our times of distress. Father, help us to always remember you are God and we are not. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness. You'll hear a lot, of, a lot said and read a lot about love today. Um, and the greatest statement on love uh, has been made on our behalf by Jesus himself. That's the reason we gather here. That's the reason you're tuned in online with your family or um, with whomever else is because of what Jesus did. And it's embodied in these simple emblems, these reminders that we hold. And I wanted us to read as we reflect this morning. Um, about the greatest love that was shown. These are Jesus' own words from John 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be complete <clears throat> in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus lived that 
statement out in the fullest reality to the fullest extent. And that's why we hold these things today. And for our church, what, what a time to lean in to the reality that, that this represents. What a time. We've been hit hard by death and sorrow just in the two months of this year. And praise be to God that because of Jesus, death doesn't have the final say in the lives of his saints. Jesus himself does. And we praise him for that. Let's bow. Father God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus, for the sacrifice that he made, for the love that he showed and poured out to the fullest extent. God, as we, as we take this bread right now, may it be a reminder to us of his broken body given for us that he lived out the words that he said, that greater love lays down his life for one's friends. God, we praise you and we praise your son Jesus for that this morning. Amen. Let's bow once again. Father, in the same way we hold this cup, it represents the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and washes away our sin. God, in the same way, we simply say thank you for the love shown on our behalf that while we were still sinners, your son Jesus died for us at just the right time. God, we celebrate that this morning. Thank you. Amen. Love.